Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Southeast Termite and Pest Control. Mosquitoes, carpenter bees, termites, bed bugs. Then there's just normal creepy crawlies, ants, spiders, etc. Southeast Termite and Pest Control can handle all of those bugs, all those critters. Whether you live in Morristown, Maryville, La Follette, Jamestown, anywhere in between, call Southeast Termite and Pest Control this week, southeasttermite.com. Okay, Tony Vitello has clearly been a tremendous hire for the University of Tennessee. The guy who hired him was John Curry during his brief six-month reign here at UT as the athletic director. Since landing at Wake Forest, Curry has seen the football program go through a nice little period. They had a great year last year, made it to the ACC championship game. Not with the coach he hired, Dave Clawson, but it still got better under his watch. And he hired Steve Forbes, who was the mm -hmm. reigning ACC basketball coach of the year. But Curry, when he was here, thought he would let the Gruden rumor serve as his smoke screen during his coach search. That blew up in his face because people believed him. He didn't do a good enough job of letting people like Peyton Manning, who were involved in the search for Shiano, get out and spread the word that, hey, he's good, I'm on board with this. He, did, he went AWOL on a flight <laughs> that day. Which, he basically, he opened the door for the fan base, on the, the Twitter part of this fan base, Clay Travis, who they worship, and Philip Fulmer, to kind of get in the ear of the administration at the time, and they booted John Curry. In hindsight, tough question, because a lot, of, a lot of permutations here. You know where they are right now, and you feel okay about it. But in hindsight, would Tennessee have been better off sticking with Curry and Leach, or Curry and Shiano, <coughs> as opposed to blowing him up and bringing in Fulmer and Pruitt? Looking at what Curry's done now. David, I'll start with you, because I know you're not a Curry guy. No, I, I think Curry is a good athletic director, but I think ultimately it's a little bit like the Brian Harson Auburn situation, except you did fire him. That when the sort of catastrophic event of the 2017 coaching search, even before the leech stuff happens, it undercuts your ability to do your job. You can't. You've lost so much support that you're going to be ineffective at fundraising, at managing all your relationships on campus, all those things that are important um, to being an athletic director. And when something happens that undercuts your ability to do your job, it really doesn't matter who you are or what you're doing. You have to move on. So, you know, I think Tennessee, if the 2017 coaching service is a little bit, ch you know, more chill, I guess, for lack of a better term, it, didn't go completely it could be rail. fine. But when you've lost so much uh, capital, you, you, you can't operate. So you kind of have to have to go. It wouldn't it wouldn't have worked. So, OK. Good well, point. yeah, I, uh, my feeling is that he basically made one mistake, and it cost him. I thought he was a really good athletic director, not just an average. I thought he was really good, and I thought he was taking things in a positive direction. He, they would have already done a lot of these renovations at Neyland Stadium if he had stayed here. But the coaching search was the one thing that, that undermined him, and if people had accepted Greg Schiano, I think John, John Curry would still be the athletic director at Tennessee. Uh, and I think he would have done a very good job. And he was responsible for hiring several of the coaches on this staff, including Tony Vitello, including Chris Woodruff, who had the Tennessee team ranked number one in the country. A lot of people say, you know, he didn't get along with Frank Martin at Kansas State, didn't get along with coaches very well, you know, was kind of a cold fish. I don't know, I'll go back in time. People around here hated Doug Dickey, and I don't know that Tennessee's ever had a better athletic director <laughs> yeah. in terms of what the program did as a whole. There, there are gaps in every person, you know, basketball. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't succeed, but he did try. Uh, Dickey was a cold fish and very good. So I don't know that the personality thing really way, it sways me one way or the other. Josh, did, in hindsight, should you have kept Curry? Or is David right that nah, it blew up so bad you had to get rid of him? Yeah, I think it's, even in hindsight, it's, it's best for both parties. He's at a better place for him, John Curry is. And Tennessee, years later, is in a better place now. And now they have a really good athletic director as well. And uh, Danny White. So the road to where Tennessee, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think Looks so. Seems that way. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the road to this point was bumpy, but <laughs> yeah. but I, I think it has worked uh, out. Uh, th there's always the who knows what would have happened if if Jim McElwain's better at his job. Maybe Dan Mullen ends up being the coach at Tennessee, and who knows how that would have played out. But in that moment, everybody would have been cool with it. Uh, just a few months earlier, remember John Curry puts back in the name Lady Vols, and his approval rating is way up here. Yeah. yeah. But then a coaching search that he didn't handle well, he caught some bad breaks in it, and it all blew up. So you know, I, I think years later, everybody's in the right spot for them. And John, I still go back to when, answer, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't disagree with it. <laughs> I still go back to when you had John Curry on the show and how just impressive he was and, and the wow. And you wish that would have worked out, right? But things went so bad, so much, 
I think about, you hear so many of the athletic directors that have their desk drawer, they pull out and there's the notepad and they've got the name on there, the guy they can go get. That's what he needed. He needed the name on there that he could go get and hire that people would have been happy with. And when you kept going down the list, it just blew up. I think he should have just right. done a better job of selling the Greg Schiano thing. And people, you know, so many people use the, well, Peyton Manning even hated him when they were playing, when he played against the Buccaneers. It's like, Peyton Manning was involved in that search. Peyton he endorsed Manning it. Endorsed it. Yeah, he so did. they should have had Peyton Manning front and center. So Publicly this is my it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I, think th I think that's where he mismanaged it. I don't know that the Shiano thing goes off the rails if it isn't just dropped out of the sky at the last minute where Clay Travis can go, this is awful, and then his minions go, yes, it's awful, and go, you know, tweeting <laughs> the little phone. But, but didn't you say, Clay look, says. Desperate going to Oklahoma State, Purdue, NC State. Oh, yeah, I it mean, turned, it went nuts. But, but here's the thing. Uh, How's that his fault with Dave Dorn? He went to NC State, and then the fans lit up Dave Dorn's phone. We don't want you here. <laughs> I mean, so it, it went off the rails partially because he didn't control it. And didn't get the message out. Agreed, agreed. You know, so well, he, part wanted, of that, he wanted Dan Mullen, plan B with Shiano. And right. He didn't think there'd be any objection to Shiano. And then... See, that was a mistake. Yeah, and then it was like, uh-oh, now plan C, D, F, right. whatever. That morning we said on the show, it can't be Shiano. We didn't think that he was going to do it that day because it yeah. can't be Shiano. Fans will revolt. You can no. go back and watch that show. <laughs> yeah. I said that, and I have no idea that... I didn't mean it literally. <laughs> no, it was coming. But anyway, hey, you led an insurrection. <laughs> <laughs> a riot. <laughs> Nothing to do with that one. All right. Many others <laughs> against me. All right. Uh, when we come back, to things that we say, and then you think about it, it's like, but is that right? We've said on this show, I've said it. Well, Tennessee's top 15 type basketball program. I'm watching the Final Four last night, and I'm thinking, is it? How can you be a top 15 program if you've never made a Final Four? Can Tennessee be a top 15 program without reaching a Final Four? I'll ask these guys next. Come on back. <laughs> 